Hello church family. I wanted to make this video and share with you a couple things on my heart before we gather on Sunday. The times we're living in are horrific times. I mean, we see it on the news. We know what's going on, the burning of the cities, the riots in the streets. We see the effects of the world just coming undone. And during these times, we as the church are called to be the light, to be able to come together, strengthen one another, encourage one another. The Bible says in 2 Timothy chapter 3, This know also that in the last days perilous times shall come, for men shall be lovers of their own self, covetousness, boasters, proud, blasphemers, disobedient to parents, unthankful, unholy, without natural affection, truce breakers, false accusers, incontinent, fierce, despisers of those that are good, traitors, heady, high-minded, lovers of pleasure more than lovers of God. And what we're seeing in the world today is we're seeing the effects of sin running rampant in our world. What we're seeing is the structure of globalists desiring to bring down America and they're succeeding. They're having a great impact on our nation. They're bringing down a country. The coronavirus, I believe, in part was used to bring down the economies of the world, to bring down the governments of the world. And then what you're seeing is the desire to raise up a, a global empire. But this doesn't surprise us. We, we see these things written in scripture. We understand that the Bible speaks clearly of these events, but it's, it's something to be living through them. But I got to tell you this, we need one another because we don't wrestle against flesh and blood. In fact, we're told as we look in Ephesians, it tells us that during these times, we need to put on the whole armor of God, that we need to be equipped so that we can stand in these days. In Ephesians chapter 6, it says, Finally, my brethren, be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. Put on the whole armor of God that you may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. For we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of darkness of this world, against spiritual wickedness in high places. You see, the way we're going to win this battle is through prayer, through coming together as the body of Christ, through coming together to pray, to strengthen, to encourage one another. And I know you, like me, we all need a little shot of encouragement from a brother or sister. And I believe it's the enemy trying to keep us apart. He tries to divide the church, give us differences politically, give us differences over even the virus and how you know, we're to, to handle that within our own lives, within the church. The enemy has done everything he can to keep the church silent, even closing the doors of the church and stopping God's people from truly gathering together. Well, we know that in Hebrews, it declares to us in Hebrews verse 22, it says, let us draw near with a true heart and full assurance of faith, having one heart sprinkled from an evil conscience and our bodies washed with pure water. How do we do that? By accepting Christ as our savior, by knowing that he truly is the high priest of God that he saved our soul, he died for us on the cross for our sins. He shed his own blood. And we come to him and ask him, Lord Jesus, forgive me, save me, wash me, cleanse me from my sin. And then we continue to look to him. We continue to encourage one another in the faith. It goes on and says, let us hold fast the profession of our hope without wavering, for he is faithful that promised. You see, these times we're living in, there's a lot of fear. There's a lot of concern and worry. We know as Christians, God hasn't given us that spirit of fear. He wants to reassure us with his very presence in our life. He wants to encourage us that he is on the throne and in control, and we can trust in him. And how do we do that? We do that by gathering together, by coming and encouraging each other, 
by praying and seeking the Lord. In fact, it goes on in Hebrews and it says, let us consider one another to provoke unto love and to good works. You see, the reason we gather together and have fellowship is so that we can encourage each other to keep going, to stand strong, to encourage each other that Jesus Christ is in control. It tells us in the next verse in Hebrews, not forsaking the assembling of ourselves together as the manner of some is, but exhorting one another in so much more as you see the day approaching. My brothers and sisters, I, I see the day approaching and we see what's going on in the world. And I gotta tell you, I need you. We need one another. We need to encourage each other. You know, just seeing you smile, just seeing your eyes brighten up when we gather in any capacity is an encouragement to our hearts. And I believe it is to yours. What we want to do here at Grace and Truth is we want to begin the process of regathering together. We understand there's a lot of concerns and there's a lot of physical needs within our body and we want to address each one of them. In fact, what we're doing this Sunday is we're going to gather at the church and provide an environment that is going to be safe for all, that's going to be welcoming to all. In fact, if you look at the sanctuary right now, we have the seats displaced. We have a, a lot of space between them. We're going to continue to create more space. In fact, I'll take you on a little journey. I want to show you what we did with the basement. We're going to have the windows open to get a lot of fresh air in. We're going to have the windows in the basement open for the fresh air. And we're going to continue, for you who have concerns and needs, we're going to continue to broadcast our message on the FM dial so you can come into the parking lot. You can continue to sit in your car and you can listen on the FM channel on 96.3. We're going to have a space in the sanctuary like you see. We're going to have a much larger space in the basement with a video feed downstairs so that if you feel more comfortable with a greater distancing, you're welcome. You can come and you can wear a mask, you can wear clothes. There's no condemnation on how you need to take care of yourself during these times. But I want you to know this, we're with you. We're here to support you, we're here to encourage you, and we're here to stand together. But the thing I'm really encouraged in my heart and convinced in my heart is we need to be together. These are perilous times, these are troubled times. And, and I just encourage you, if you're able to come Sunday, you're welcome. And any place you feel is, is convenient for you and more practical for you, you sit there. If it's in your car, if it's in the sanctuary, if it's in down, downstairs with a much larger spacing, you just come because we need to strengthen, encourage, and build each other up in the faith. And also afterwards, what I thought is we will have a couple outdoor tents and we'll have some beverage stations there so that outside we can fellowship at a safe distance, but in the great outdoors. The tents will be set up, the, the coffee will be self-served. In fact, you don't have to touch any handle. We have, you know, coffee makers that you just can put your cup underneath it and single serving creamers and sugars. We'll have some bottled water out there and maybe even some bags of individually, you know, packaged chips for you to munch on. Our heart is to start coming together in whatever way we can to build each other up because these are the days that are approaching us and we must stand together. I want you to know that the Lord is with you. He's never going to leave you. Man, he hasn't bailed out on you yet and he won't. We need to draw close to him. If you're wondering what in the world's going on in the world, we're going to start talking about that as we gather on Sundays and look into the scriptures and find our hope as we always do in Jesus Christ. But it's wonderful when you know that there's brothers standing together with you. So know that the Lord loves you. Our service time, we're going to continue at 1030 like we have during our parking lot service. We will continue it at 10.30. Know how much he loves you.
and why don't we pray? Father, thank you. Thank you that you are with each member of this body, that you love them with an everlasting love, and that you will take care of their individual needs wherever they're at. And our heart, Lord, is to make a safe place where we can continue to gather together and encourage each other, build each other up in the faith, and strengthen each other. And we look to you, Lord, our hope and our future, our strong tower, because these are perilous times, and we need you so much more, Lord. So thank you for being with your body. Thank you for safeguarding your people. And we look to you and know that you will continue to have your safety upon us. We thank you. May you bless all my brothers and sisters in Jesus' name. Amen. God bless you guys. Have a wonderful week in the Lord, and we'll see you Sunday. God bless you.